Hello YouTube, this is Marco. I'm your Watch Cardinal bringing you another video here today talking my Rolex dilemma, my steel sports dilemma. So let's just jump straight into it. Of course, as you well know, if you've watched any of my videos or any past Archie Luxury live streams, I was looking to purchase a Rolex 214270, so that's the Explorer 1 with the Mark II dial, at retail as a piece for first and foremost my first Rolex, and secondly to commemorate my graduation from university. However, since then, I've had a number of interesting ideas swirl around my head, and I've been presented uh, with an offer from a loyal viewer of Archie's, his name is GB, so shout out to you GB, I am going to shout you out because you are uh, an extremely nice guy, who has offered for me to purchase his Rolex Submariner 114060, so that's the No Date Submariner from 2017, box and papers, in basically mint condition. I mean, there's literally nothing wrong with the watch whatsoever. He even says that he's worn it only about three times. So here's my dilemma. Do I wait for the Explorer or do I get the Submariner instead and skip the wait list? Well, here's my rationale for both watches. If I get the Explorer one, it starts to build a relationship with the AD. And that's good in turn because if ever I wanna collect Rolex in the future, then of course I will have kind of an in, so to speak, with that authorized dealer. I'm obviously not a flipper. I'm not looking to sell the watch anytime soon. So it'll help establish that kind of trust and dialogue uh, of course, to potentially get more Rolex in the future. Now, of course, the problem is that I do have to wait. Now, they did quote me latest to the fall, but I mean, if we're talking the fall, we're talking September, October, potentially November, to get a Rolex Explorer 1. And listen, I mean this with all due respect, but an Explorer is not a hard-to-get steel sports model, guys. Let's be honest with one another. It is really not that difficult. So the, my dilemma is, why would the AD quote me all the way to the fall to get an explorer and and let's be honest with one another we have no idea what rolex is going to release but one of the most anticipated releases is a explorer update because it's it's in my opinion due for an update because it has the old movement the 48 hour power reserve as opposed to the 70 hour power reserve and so then i'm going to be left holding the bag so to speak i mean there's no way i'm going to get the new explorer with the new movement the updated movement if rolex of course decides to release a new explorer uh if of course Rolex ultimately comes out with the new Explorer from my AD. I mean, I'm just, there's no chance that somebody who's 21 years old, no prior purchase history, who was quoted to the fall is going to get that watch in the fall. There's just no chance whatsoever, in my opinion. And so I don't want to be left holding the bag and ultimately having to waiting kind of years on end before I, I actually get the, the watch I want. And ultimately, I'm kind of cheesed off overall by the Rolex authorized dealer experience because as I mentioned, a Rolex Explorer is not a hard to get model. I'm not asking them to twist my arm. And listen, I get it. I've only been waiting maybe patiently a few weeks. And while some people may wait months and years, for me, listen, I do love Rolex. I do love Rolex watches. But there are other brands that also interest me out there that I'm willing to collect and that I, I don't potentially just want to have a, a watch collection of still six steel sports models or 10 steel sports models, I want to have some diversity in my collection. You know, I like watches of all price ranges. Obviously, I'm talking luxury watches of all price ranges uh, that are finished in different details. So uh, I'm going to go through a couple of brands in some next few videos that I'm looking at seriously in terms of wanting to buy that I think are over overlooked by most watch collectors, unfortunately, or fortunately for us, the buyer. Uh, and so I, I would say this, that Although building a relationship with an AD is important, I don't believe that a purportedly a brand that purportedly sells luxury watches should give you the kind of neg negative experience I've unfortunately had with these authorized dealers in the past. Now, of course, the third AD I went to was very nice. They put me down on the wait list, but there's no chance I'm going to get a new Explorer from that AD if Rolex decides to update the Explorer range. I just don't see that as being realistic. So for me, the second option is, of course, to pull the trigger on the Rolex Submariner. Now, what's the rationale behind having a Submariner? Of course, a Submariner is an extremely difficult to get model. It is not easy whatsoever. And for me, I think that if I pass up on getting a Rolex Submariner now, there is a very slim chance I'm going to get one in the future. Sure, if I wait for the Explorer potential, I'll build a relationship with the AD and I can get a Rolex and a Submariner in the future. But what I see is kind of the inverse. I think that the Rolex sub is a much harder watch to get than we think because again, the watch market is only expanding as more and more people enter into, of course, watch collecting. 
it's only going to get harder for us to get Rolex watches because Rolex is the brand that most people turn to, unfortunately. So I think if I pass up this Rolex sub now, there's just a very slim chance I'm going to be able to buy one in the future without paying kind of ridiculous prices. And of course, I think that an Explorer 1 is a much easier to get model than a Rolex Submariner. So the second part that, that is unfortunate for me is I am going to be stretching myself a little bit financially if I were to pull the trigger on the Submariner. Now, I do love the Submariner. I think it's a perfect do everything, go everywhere type of watch the same way that the Explorer is. Now, if you were asking me personally what watch I would like to get, there's no question that for me, it's the Explorer one. It's one of the watches that got me into watches that along with the 16700 were the two watches that really made me fall in love with watches and, and get into the hobby to begin with. You know, they were kind of what I like to call my two first loves in watches. But I know for a fact the 16700 isn't going anywhere. Rolex made a tremendous amount of them. And a Rolex Explorer isn't going anywhere either. You know, it's not that hard of a model to get. And ultimately, even if I never get one, I think I can live without it and, and just stick with the Note 8 sub and be happy with that instead. Now, again, going back to the price issue, a Rolex Explorer at retail here in Canada with taxes factoring, and of course, because I pay 15% taxes here in Montreal, sales tax that is, it would cost me about $8,800. Now the sub, we're talking in the 12 dollars to 13000 Canadian dollar range. Now that's a significantly bigger amount of money. So I am stretching myself financially, but I think that it's a, it's a very worthwhile kind of choice because I think that a sub is timeless, it's classic, it's not going anywhere. And ultimately, uh, the 114060, obviously it's a, a now discontinued. It's a, it has a maxi case, maxi dial, and it's got all the hallmarks, in my opinion, that makes Rolex great, especially because it has the modern bracelet and clasp. So I think personally, I, I'm really going to pull the trigger on that Rolex Submariner. I'd love to get all of your guys' input. Let me know what you think down in the comments I should do. Uh, should I wait for the Explorer or should I instead pull the trigger and get the Submariner? Again, I think personally, the Submariner is just the better choice here. I can always get an Explorer down the, down the track, down the road. No problems at all. Uh, and I think ultimately the price that I'm paying for the Rolex Submariner, I'll just never be able to get another one at the price that I would be getting it at. So I, I just think it's really a deal that's too good to pass up. I think that, uh, again, although I do prefer the Explorer, I do also really like the Note 8 Sub. And, and, you know, I just never thought I would be able to buy it because ultimately it's hard to get model. And so I think that ultimately my choice lies in just purchasing the Rolex Submariner. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Tell me if you think I'm crazy, I should just wait out for the Explorer or I should just immediately pull the trigger on the Rolex Submariner. Guys, I'm sorry for the lack of uploading. Obviously my schedule is a little bit crazy with school. I'm in the middle of midterms now as we speak, but next week I am falling on March break. So you can definitely expect me to be posting uh, a lot more videos than uh, I have been in the recent weeks. Again, thank you all for watching. My name is Marco, I'm your Watch Cardinal and I'll see you guys in the next one.